for Denmark, number three seeds Matthias Christians and Lady Greyback. And for Poland, we're going to take it and get a Sliema. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning and welcome to the finals of the 2015 Carlton Irish Open here at the Baldoyle Badminton Centre. As you can see, on court and already on the way, it's the mixed doubles final in red, closest to the camera, representing Denmark, the number three seeds, Matthias Christiansen and Lena Greyback. Putting them in black, furthest from the camera, number two seeds, Robert Matusiak and Nadia Zieba of Poland. Holes, of course, who have just come back together at the beginning of the summer after Nadia was out for 18 months after the birth of her baby. Uh, hockey tip to make the Olympics. Tuziak and Zieba, European champions, of course, from 2012 with mixed doubles. Much more. Glad to be here. issues on the sound, apologies for that. Oh. 
hopefully we'll get it sorted out. I think we're ready to rock. As I said, Matusiak and Zeba, world number 28 with just nine tournaments played, which is a phenomenal score uh, in itself, uh, Dan. Win yeah. Winners in Bitburger, Bulgaria, Belgium, Kharkiv and Lagos. Hot, hot favourites to go to the Olympics. Yeah, it just goes to show the, the standard of these guys, so that they can get these results time in, time out. It's, it's fantastic. Matusiak's been doing this for years. Uh, great example for anyone out there looking at how to have a long career, Mark how to keep yourself in that kind of form for so many tournaments in a row. Sarah Silver, nine, On the lady at the front, and he's sure then when the shuttle goes over his head that he can still have his partner attacking at the back. They actually sometimes work just as well in that formation as they do in the other formation. to come up and challenge especially when uh, Christensen's attacking no fear of coming forward so brave coming onto the net and that wins them so many points <laughs> Dean's doing well there in defence holding out the play Danish holding that two point advantage could be crucial now in this first set. It is. It is. Oh. Great exchange at the net again with Greyback again winning at the front, forcing the lift, and then Christian powering through. Going to be a, a really good battle at the front of the court with both ladies not wanting to give away the lift. So far, Greyback has been the favourite and has been winning at the front of the court. Ah, very brave. Good chance of pushing forward there, attacking onto Ziba. So far, it's been all in favour of the Danes. The Danes now taking the front, taking the midcourt controlling the match. You can see both players pushing up the court. The poles are getting caught on defence and therefore the Danes are just winning out. Good lift there by Matuzak hitting the back line but it's going to be difficult for the poles if they continue to defend so much. Clever 
shot by Matizak in the middle of rally, just pinning it up over the top, getting the players onto the backboard and really, really opening up the play. And it's again just two points in it. Matizak to serve now and the Poles are looking to close down that two point gap. It's serving by Matizak. Two really good serves in a row. The Dean's struggling to get the shuttle going down, and the Poles are back on the attack again. This is changing the match back in favour. 14 all. That time, Robert happy to lift, trying to get Gray back on the defence. And as he lifted over her head, he was unable to take full advantage of the counter attack. Exploiting that gap in the middle of the court between the Polish pair. One. Thank you, Daniel, for holding the fort. Welcome and, uh, back, Mark. <laughs> I'm back. Some technically technical difficulties there. Uh, we're back with you. As I said, Daniel holding the fort with his expert commentary. And uh, Danes, too much in control, you would suspect, Dan. Poles coming back at them, but then uh, retain their composure to keep that one point, two point lead. Yeah. From that interval, you just seen there that the Danes really went full out on the attack. A great back started to take the net. Chris Jansen powering down from the back, and uh, the Poles were too happy just to give away the lifts, set on defence. Uh, what Robert's trying to do now is he's, when he's lifting, he's trying to lift it to get Gray back to the back of the court and exploit that. But they're quite fast at changing over. Gray back moves forward. Chris Jansen gets an attack, and he's very dangerous. Yeah, Lena is always looking for that opportunity to rush into the net. Always, always looking for it. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, I would have thought that maybe the Poles would have tried to take the net on more, but in the opening exchanges, maybe when Ziba had lost out a few to Grey back, she, she wasn't as comfortable to challenge the net. And so far, that's been the difference. And again there, that's going to be what changes the game. She can be confident enough to challenge. And then Robert is back on the attack because from midcourt he's going to be devastating. So it's 16 17. Robert Enthusiak serving to Lena Greyback. Ah, there you go. There's another good example. Ziba taking the net, getting a pass Greyback, and then midcourt push and Robert coming straight onto it. Play. Oh, receiver called against Matthias Christiansen. Such a clever serve by Robert, and I can see Christiansen saying that it's a double movement. I can see it was a slight delay, and that hold made Christiansen go forward. Um, it's, a, it's a common tactic used. And uh, Mark, you'd have to say that's a bit of streetwise being used there. Yeah, he's that been around. Of course, Robert Matusiak going for his fourth Olympic Games. Uh, and that just is 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 uh, an indication of the experience of the man. You see such an important point, seventy nine. Slight delay, just holds it. Christiansen moves forward and then uses the flick. Really clever. What a point in the game to get your nose in front. Ah, there you go again. Just patient attack, hitting down. You wouldn't call Matusak the hardest hitter on the court, but what you see is he's quite comfortable to hit five, six, seven shots, keep the shuttle going down, and then Ziba at the front has such good reach that it's so difficult when you're on defense to get past this pair. 
what Matusiak will also know is that, you know, Matthias, while very strong and very powerful, if something does go against him, he can uh, just lose concentration for a few points. <laughs> Certainly, uh, that fault receiver might just be playing on his mind. And there's, a, uh, and there's another error because he's, he's still affected by, by that fault receiver called three points ago. There's a string gone on the racket. That smash. Oh, yellow card. Yeah, he threw his racket there uh, towards the box. Um, and it kind of sums up what you said, Mark. Yeah. The, the frustration of the flick at the big point, 17 all. And suddenly you've seen a number of unforced errors. And that temper really, really, really can cost someone uh, a game. And it has done in this case. Of course, this is where Greyback needs to come into her own. That calm persona, she needs to just... Uh, just talk to our partner, calm him down a little bit, and uh, get him refocused. So it's game point. It's five points in a row on the serve of Robert Matusiak. Yeah, great return. Yeah, I looked, say, in, yeah. looked into me. You did call it, Mark. It's said that back has that cool attitude and you could see that there from where she just picked out the winner off serve at 2017 down. Again a good serve, follow that. Yeah. And again, controlling the net. Taking just. the control at the net, you know, it's something that she's very, very good at. Let's see if she can keep this composure now. 19-20, big serve. That was a, a strange decision, Mark, after Greyback taking on the net. He had a chance there maybe to push straight down the line and try to go over the top of Matusiak. Dangerous lift and cross, maybe setting up his partner. Um, and the closing points there, you'd have to say that the Polish pair used their experience very well. Exactly. Matthias Christiansen, you know, the obvious shot was to push down the line and, uh, you know, keep the rally going almost and, and, and set up the attack again. But it's that... Uh, He's a fiery character at the best of times, you know, and uh, he was right now at this mid-court interval. He's he's still thinking about that 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 uh, fault receiver. What is it? Five, six points ago. Yeah, it can really work in his favor, and it can really work against him because when he's fired up and his momentum's going with him, it can make him unstoppable because he just believes in everything that he's doing. But then you can see on the flip side, he breaks the string. He has a fault called against him, and suddenly three, four points are gone and at this level against this kind of opposition you cannot switch off that period of time. 17 all turns into 21. Definitely think at the start of the second game it's going to be down to which lady can take control of the net. A uh, good example of that from where the 11 point interval, Christiansen and his partner Greyback pushed on, got that 4 point lead and then again good serving, Ziba took control of the net again and suddenly the poles were back in control so I definitely think that this game is going to be won up at the front of the court with both pairs having good men who can attack through the backcourt so it's exciting to see what way this game will start. Yeah I also think the first points, first 5 points in this second game are crucial from a Danish perspective. We're going to see now, is, is Christiansen back in the game? For sure. Ah, great exchange there. I thought Greyback did very well, but the speed of Ziva coming forward was fantastic. And Christiansen remained cool there. Kept them in the game. Nadia came forward, but uh, she didn't appear to me to come forward with real conviction. There certainly was an opportunity to put that one away. In recent tournaments, while while the Poles have won what five tournaments since they come back together at the beginning of the summer, recent in recent tournaments, especially in Scotland, when I watched her, 
she's just looking a little bit tentative and uh, not as confident as, as, as we would normally see her. Yeah, I think in these uh, Olympic qualifying years you'll see pairs go up and down in level and that's just because of the sheer volume of the matches and the tournaments that they're playing so it's impossible maybe to be at your best in every single tournament when you're playing 14, 14 tournaments in a row. So. Of the polls, Daniel, one of the pairs who the Irish Sam and Chloe would have expected to be fighting against for a, an Olympic spot, and uh, it looks like it's starting to drift away now from the Irish, and uh, has the realization of that fact maybe set in at this point? Uh, I think it's uh, yeah, it's difficult uh, with with the Irish pair. Sam and Chloe definitely were expecting to have maybe a better set of results in Wales and Ireland. Um, we got off to this campaign with a, a good win, beating the, the Welsh Open champions. But they also beat the Poles, of course, in in uh, the White Knights yeah. in uh, in the Olympic qualification period. Yeah, couldn't have had a better start really mm. to the to the period. But it just shows that uh, the competition is is huge out there, and there's a number of European pairs that would be really looking to to stamp their authority on it. But so far, it definitely is this Polish pair that has done it so far. The French Labar and Lefel also uh, getting some really good results. Some fantastic results from that pair. Of course, those of you who are watching, so difficult to qualify for the Olympics in doubles. It's a 16 draw, so uh, effectively, the clean list, as it's called, once you take out maybe the third ranked uh, Korean and Chinese, might go down to world number 22, uh, something like that. Uh, so much more difficult to qualify in, in any of the doubles events as opposed to the singles. Got your continental spaces there as well, so there's, there's a number of spaces go to the, to the continent. So That's right, and the Australians look like they'll take one of those, uh, even ranked lower than uh, Sam and Chloe at the moment, I think, or very close to, uh, in, in around the same world ranking. Possibly yeah. as well, so it, it really uh, puts down the spaces that are available, so... So you've got to say when you get there to the Olympics and you see the mixed doubles, it is a class lineup. Yeah, certainly all the doubles events at the Olympics are 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 certainly world class uh, tournaments. The singles not so much because uh, you, you have a much bigger draw. You've realistically people who are almost outside the world's top 100 qualifying, and you will get some. Of these continental places with players who are outside the world's top 100 getting into the Olympics. That's a good return from Zeba. Yeah, the body language again, Mark. <laughs> Beaten yesterday in the men's doubles semi final when they really had that men's doubles uh, under control, leading. In the first won the first game leading convincing I think by three or four towards the end of the second game letting it slip Chris Janssen and Daugard against the Germans Beck and Kesbauer yeah it was a fantastic game of men's doubles it uh, took all kind of changes throughout the game but there was such good body language from the German there at the end of the first game so they really they really came out hard all the way to the end don't speak much Polish, but I know what that word was <laughs> from Robert Matusiak. I'd have to turn off the mic before you repeat that, Mark. <laughs> of course, uh, Nadia Kostichuka, as uh, her maiden name, Nadia Zieba, her married name, originally from Belarus. Really? Yes, Belarusian originally just across the border in a town called Brest, B-R-E-S-T, the same village that Olga Conan also came from. Now, there's the, some uh, useless information for you. You might need to set up an academy over there. <laughs> might be some good talent. Yeah. We'll get our talent scout out there and see what's happening there. Something in the water, maybe. Just... The two-point lead here, I find it's going to be very difficult for the Danes to, to, to get that back. The, yeah. the body language of the Poles now is starting to look more and more confident as the game goes on. 
Right. It's close, but for me, it's it's in favour of the more experienced pair. Yeah, I think I think Matuziak and Zieba know that they're in control. Know that they can probably go on and win this, playing within themselves. They they still know that Christiansen is the volatile uh, partner in the Danish partnership. But he's also a fighter, so uh, you know he, he's not going to give up either. But as I said, huge, huge onus and responsibility on the shoulders of Lena Griebeck. Such contrasting characters. So eight all, two in a row on the serve. Griebeck. Another example there, Robert not afraid to go forward, but the, the Danes controlling the rally well, despite the pressure being coming at them from both Zeba and Matuzak. But again, I have to say it, Lena Greyback's serve has been fantastic in this game. She's really controlling the front of the court, and that, that's what's changed the game in their favour again. Oh, misunderstanding between the <laughs> Danish pair. Chris Janssen saw the gap, went for it, and just wasn't able to get enough on it to finish the rally. It definitely is uh, something that in mixed doubles now. The men are not afraid to come forward to challenge the net, uh, let their lady hold the back of the court. And I think it's, it's important that players, when they see that gap and they, and they go for it, that they have to really commit, because it does leave your opponent exposed at the back. But if you take that risk, you can win you the game as well, Mark. Yeah. As a wise man once said, you don't win games by defending. You know, you have to, you ha you sometimes you have to take that risk and you have to, especially with the ladies, you know, push forward if you can and put pressure on the opposing pair. Again, just so good at the front of the court, controlling and everything Ziva tries to push past. Greybacks getting a racket on it. And you can see again, it is that battle of who gets the attack first is normally winning the rally. You see there, uh, it's it's the frustration creeping in now. Two, three times in a row, the poles have tried to push through Greyback and she's been able to get it and cut it out. So there Matuzak tried to change it that he turned the shuttle away from her, but still she's getting everything. Yeah, the Danes have gone into this interval two points ahead, 11-9, and all of a sudden the momentum just changing a little bit. A couple of really, really good rallies. And again, it's, 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 it's Lena leading the charge really from the Danish side of the net. Complement each other well. Uh, went way back to 20 seconds. 20 seconds. He's going to hit power. He's going to follow up to the big court. He's going to crash in. So once they're positive, once they're working for each other, it's going to be difficult to compare to play against them. Robert Matusiak. seen much of Lena Greyback uh, in the last couple of weeks, maybe two months. I'm not sure, I haven't heard, maybe she's been out with, uh, with injury, but uh, certainly she comes to the court much fresher uh, than most of the rest. You know, we know we see it in Olympic qualification year. The quality of the badminton drops as we get closer to that qualification put off. Pressure, st stress. 
it's a cruel qualification system in badminton. this last game, 14-11, and the Danes keep this lead, can they continue to push on, or will it go in favour of the goals like last game? 15 the big points. So yeah, but just looking a little bit insecure, a cross-court lift was well outside the tram line. Here we go. Can Robert Matuzak get a run of serves just like the last set? Bring both back into the game. Will the Danes hold strong this time? Game, this is where it all changes. You have to say as well, Matuzak is the best servers around. Really getting the dipping below level net. You can see it when he steps up, he's scoring a lot of points on the serve. Also, his flick serve is so difficult to read. Serve. Then uh, a smash into the forehand hip. Almost impossible to, bend, to defend against. That lift wasn't good enough. It was too central and it gave him too many options. He could hit to the outside, he could hit inside. Too much ground to cover, but a clever smash and with a lot of power there. Oh. Oh. Had a bit of magic there, Mark. <laughs> cross court, cross net. Wouldn't have been a shot I would have cho chosen myself, but. That's why I'm not out there playing this match. Well, I think at this point, with a 18-13 lead, and, and this, is, this is the character that is Matthias Christiansen. When it's good, it's great. Mm. When it's bad, sometimes it can be absolutely awful. And he gets this momentum, and uh, he gets this Sorry, feeling. He really is uh, top class. Yeah, I remember watching him in, uh, at the junior level in the men's doubles with Dougard. They really, really have a fiery personality on board. It's great to watch. These guys are on the farm. They're really, really aggressive. Fast band, explosive. For, for band, so band so right there, when you see that, it'll be really, really good band to watch. Of course, alongside Dougard, they didn't win the European Junior title. They were runners up, and, and, and on that occasion, I remember watching it, it was their temperament that let them down uh, against uh, compatriots uh, Babic and Hendrickson. Serve over, 15, 11. Looking like three sets. I still think the Poles will do it in two. We go away during the It's edgy. Uh, I'm not going to call the third, but I certainly do think it's going to go to a third game here. Speed of Tuesday coming forward. Patience in the rally. 
You know, and, and Carol, Carol E. R. Eel in the chair. You know, they've uh, they've had words before, myself and Matthias. No, it's getting close. And no, it's getting close. And no, it's getting close. And no, it's getting close. Players getting a little bit tight. Having words over the shuttle, but it's just to get that advantage, just going into the last couple of points. Dane's certainly trying to break that momentum. Pose a building. Initial interception from Grey back at the net was fantastic around the head block. 18, This is this is a huge point. Read it well, Christiansen. Service game point, 18. Game point. Danes, let's get, see, can they do it on the first time of asking two game points? <laughs> Hesitation, yeah. one felt from uh, Christiansen, but as you said, you called it. Danes have leveled it up. 21-18. Second set win. One set all. Really all to play for this deciding set. Yeah, as you said, Dan some really good battles while we questioned while we questioned uh, Matthias Christiansen's composure he certainly uh, regained that composure in that second game well back in it it's the Danes really who go into the third deciding set with the momentum yeah for sure they're they're back in charge here but uh, that late spell coming on from the poles there brought them back right into it and it could now go back in favour of these guys, so uh, who's your money on, Mark? Oh, you know, I don't, I'm not a betting man, but uh, I was. I, 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 you know, I have to say go for the FPGA, but they're the ones with most at stake here. You know, it's, uh, they're looking for Olympic qualification. I think they will figure out a way through. I think they will certainly focus on uh, Matthias Christian. Try and uh, break him again, break that focus. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Mark. Um, it definitely would be the pose that would be favoured here with their experience. But what I'm really looking forward to seeing is that net exchange between Zeba and Greyback. Who can take the net? Because that's what's really changing the game so far. There you go. It's, it's, it's that exchange that's going to win it or lose it. And um, you have to say both ladies have been equally impressive in periods of the game and both don't want to give away that lift. Oh, there we go again. What I was impressed with there was Chris Jansen moved from midcourt to the back, hit full power smash, but you could see there he was straight back onto the midcourt to take the net. He didn't want to give it away. That time opting to go over Zeba and really not a good decision. As you said before Mark, Zeba is very comfortable at the back of the court and well able to attack. So uh, for me he has to choose to take the net, be patient, attack down the ways and grey back is working well at the front for him, so no, no need to try and go over the top. Players just 
waiting for the line judge to retake his position. See again the pressure coming from the counter attack from the poles. Chris Jansen losing a little bit of patience trying to go over the top of Matusiak and anyone who's played in Baldoyle knows it's quite fast in here so if you try to go over the top you have to really give it plenty of height otherwise it's going to go out quite often. There's a good example from Robert of how you should be lifting. Height is also an issue here in Baldoyle of course, you know, uh, it's not the highest roof on the circuit but uh, it's the same for everybody and players have learned to adapt to it over the years. Of course, this could be the last year. Yeah, we're here at the Baldoyle Badminton Centre. A lot of work being done out at the National Sports Campus with the, the National Indoor Arena and the velodrome being built. So it'll be interesting to see next season. the poles did so well keeping Chris Janssen at the front of the court getting the shuttle over him each time Greyback working hard at the back and so slowly and slowly getting more and more tired and the mistake was always going to come there I think she felt that the shuttle was actually going to land out Oh, she did all the hard work then. Yeah, Ziba knows she got away with that one. All she had to do was put it down. She came to the net with an open face, spinning the shuttle onto the net. Dangerous and mixed doubles. Great back, made the move, looked to brush the shuttle, but just did not catch it right. So. She just looked off balance as she played it. Not quite sure she needed to jump so uh, erratic at it. A lot of taping around. I've only noticed it now. You, you can see the the, the black uh, strap around her knee, Lena Greyback, but there's also a lot of flesh-colored tape on the front part of her knee. So I'm guessing she has been out for a couple of weeks, maybe two months. We haven't seen her on the circuit, and I'm guessing there was some uh, knee issue. An impressive comeback. <laughs> Uncharacteristic mistake there from Vitek. No pressure. High left onto his forehand. Ah, great smash to the outside hip. Chris Jansen still coming with power in the third set. Always impressive to see when it's in the final stages of a of a match, third game, final of the tournament. These players still coming with this energy. Looking back through the history books, you would normally find or expect to see the name of Robert Matusiak, be it in men's doubles or uh, uh, Nadia Zieva on the podium. Most of the European tournaments because they've been around for so long. Yeah. Neither of them have won uh, Irish International as it was, Irish Open as it is now. Certainly in the recent past. Yeah, I'm sure that there is a uh a few Polish names on there. I know that the Poles have come here. Uh, Kalina and Lokos have been here before and uh, have Ad won this tournament. Adam Swalina is looking to win his fifth, his fourth Irish in five years. Albeit uh, going for a hat trick with Waka. One of the oh, it was up in Lisbon in 2011 before the last uh, Olympics. Michael Logos. Yeah, that was back in the famous interview when uh, they said they were men at war. Men at war. 
before I remember it well. Yeah. Grew up at disappointing Olympics for them on that occasion, of course. Yeah, I was at that Olympics and uh, I was uh, deathly quiet in the hall when uh, Michael got uh, injured in the men's doubles and they were actually playing extremely well at the time. Um, but really impressive how Helena has worked his way back up to the top again and getting into these finals with a new partner. Just goes to show his class. travel everywhere together uh, when there's no coach around they're coaching each other even if they're playing against each other uh, you know just work so hard yeah I have to say one of the most impressive uh, team units that you would see even when they're in a warm-up hall together they're helping each other out the men's doubles is helping the mixed partnership the warm-up cool down everything it's, it's very very professional not a huge amount of players but the players that are there and the players that are traveling they're all supporting each other so well they're always behind each other on court. You know, when matches have been played, they hang around to support their teammates. Whereas other other nations, you see players will play and they just disappear off back to the hotel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She did everything right. I just feel that that is a massive point there because he had just no, almost leveled the score uh, for the first time in this match in the third game and uh, that could be the changing point here if the Bulls capitalize on this and can get into the interval then you have to say that the, the momentum would be strongly in their favor Great a serve from Nadia Zeba. She's looking just a little bit edgy on her serve, especially when she's serving to the man. I wish open you'd have to say Mark is a good breeding ground for the Danes as well. We, we've quite often seen a lot of the Danes and a lot of the good young Danes coming here to it's almost like a rite of passage. We've seen that in the men's singles with Hans Christian, Janu Jorgensen, and uh, they've got another young guy here today, but it's, it's impressive to see that uh, they keep coming back and uh, the depth of players that they have at all at all levels. Yeah. You know, it, it's not the most luxurious of, 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 of arenas on the circuit, but players love the floor. Uh, it's a really springy floor. Very, very rarely you'll see a player going down with injuries. Uh, yeah, taking the looks aside, it's actually a really good hole to play in. Good sound on the shuttle, good floor. It, it, it's uh, it's one of those events where you actually see a lot of people coming back for so um, we definitely enjoy it. There's been uh, some big name winners here in the past. It's, uh, the Danes who go into the interval. Of course, Carolina Marin won her very first international in this very hall. Now, world, double world champion, all England champion, five time Super Series winner this year. She won here in 2009. We spoke about Vidinghus and Usuf. Usuf won here two occasions. And before that, uh, Kenneth Jonasson winning men's singles. So the big surprise you have to say there, Mark, is uh, Jan Jorgensen coming here, but not winning. Not winning. And do you know what? I, I spoke to Jan only about two weeks ago, and uh, that, that's one that still nips at it, nips away at him. He he has a desire to come and win an Irish international. Yeah, well, uh, he, he would be definitely w one of the highest ranked players currently that maybe has come here and hasn't come away with the gold. Uh, Matusak now, he will be looking to be another guy who adds to his name uh, as Hyatt world number one at one stage I think yeah. in mixed doubles these, this pair so it's, it would be a nice part of history to have another former world number one pairing winning of course Chris Adcock and Imogen Bankier won it here in their first year together and then went on to win world silver the following year yeah. 
So it certainly has been a breeding ground for, for many, many top Europeans. Tina Rasmussen, another famous winner. Just like that, 11 all. The 5 1 lead the Poles had earlier slipping away. I think for our young players that are out there watching today, it's really going to have to be an example of good serve, good return of serve. Because that's what's setting up the attack, and once Ealer players on attack, they've won most of the rally, so it's a good example here, and we've seen some top class serving in this match. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Great defense from the ball, ah. just one shot too many. Good rally, crowd liked it. Do you think, Mark, it's because it's a, a smaller haul, a quicker haul, that's why the majority of the rallies are being won on attack? Maybe more traditionally in the arenas, you can lift higher, you can move the shuttle around, you've got a little bit more time to make your decision. Where here, most times the shuttle gets lifted, man gets on attack, and then it's the lady making the kill at the net. Yeah, that's without, without, without a doubt, uh, that's the reason. And... Uh but I love these smaller halls. Uh, okay, Bal Doyle Bal is showing his age a little bit and uh, has been a great servant to Irish badminton. This arena. But you know, you can have you can have you can have big events in small halls. Look at the Danish Open Super, Premier Super Series. That is a small arena. It's a modern arena, but it's a very small arena, and I think badminton suits that that type. Of arena. Yeah. Definitely makes the event a bit more intimate, and uh, the fact that the players and the crowd are all in one area together. They sit behind the court. They're they're right right beside the court. You get to see these guys firsthand. It's it adds to that atmosphere. Yeah, I had to think that was definitely uh, yeah. definitely going to be called in. That was well in. Uh, it's not easy being a line judge out here, and uh, that was a good decision. And when you've got uh, a Danish player trying to maybe influence your decision, it, it doesn't get any easier, but it was the right call. So it was point for point, certainly after the interval. Big serve again from Matusiak. <sighs> One characteristic mistake there. Definitely looking to play the shuttle into the right area, but didn't need to be a drive. A simple push into the cross court would have maybe won that rally. A little look into the eyes from Matusiak to Zieb, and he's just trying to calm his partner down a little bit. mistakes coming from the poles now yeah <laughs> see that cross court smash from Zebo was dangerous and then Robert again trying to make a winner from below level the net um, not decisions that you would expect to see this pair making it's look at that again yeah great back so confident up there at the front of the court today not mistakes that you would expect to see of this pair um, to be fair though the Danes have been very very solid in these, this last game there I think a better choice for Ziba maybe not go for the more technical shot push onto the body get the shuttle back into play force them to rally at least every point a big point certainly from the Polish side of the net Oh, 
Crucial net interception from Ziba there. And the net court certainly going to her favor. He is looking for the shuttle changed. Quite happy. Or a break of momentum, which one? There you go. That is fantastic patience from Chris Jansen. Robert tempting him to hit the big hit and twice laying off until he felt the right opportunity. Then hitting on Zeba and Greyback again, making that easy interception at the net. But again, Dan, it, you know, midway through that rally, Nadia was there at the net, and she really had that opportunity to put it on the floor. It was a little bit tentative. Whereas on the opposite side, you know, if, if the Greenback was in that position, it would have been killed instantly. Yeah, and, and that, that's been the difference in the in the third set, definitely. <laughs> are edging closer to this title 1917 two points from 11 I think we've seen five six easy mistakes from the two yeah. where he's either put in the net or left it out I haven't seen that much before from him so oh yeah, that was unlucky did everything right controlled the front court and suddenly it's 18 19 I think the Danes might feel that they should have they should have this wrapped up yeah, you know, certainly Greyback did nothing wrong there. They're the ones that are looking, uh, you know, to win the points. They're looking more comfortable on court, but still, Poles just trail by one. Such a clever shot by Matuzak there. Oh, oh, super. It's not all about power. Chris Janssen and Greyback get the match point as we approach the hour mark in this mixed doubles final of the Irish Open. Yeah, great opening final and I think the spectators out there have really enjoyed this one. So, <sighs> interesting to see if this is going to be the point that wins it for the Danes or can the pull fight back once more. Attacking turn from Fieva. Oh! That's oh. Yeah, they've done it. It's, you know, they fall to the knees and really fantastic composure in the end. When it all could have went south after that controversial point early on in the match. Big time. You yeah, have to say that uh, the Poles definitely looked tense there in that match. But a, a great win for the Danes and a fantastic composure at the end. Excellent by Lena Greyback taking an net and controlling the match. That's it for the mixed doubles. We'll be back with the next final.